everyone. Today we will be talking about fourth wing. So this guys, this book is a lot of hype and I wasn't even going to film a video on it because I feel like my thoughts are kind of in not the majority thoughts and so I wasn't even going to film it. But I thought, you know what, let's talk about this book. Just to let you know, disclaimer, my thoughts are probably not going to be the majority here. I'm not saying my thoughts are the correct thoughts or that you have to agree with me. You're more than free to disagree with what I say, but let's talk about it. Off the bat, if I was just to rate this book on how I just felt about it, just didn't even think about it while reading and just read it for as it is, I'd give it an 8 out of 10 because it was very readable. It kept my interest. It was very fast paced and that's one thing I really did like about it. It didn't have any just like filler chapters. Something happened in each chapter and that I did appreciate it, especially as a reader who does get distracted very easily. This was able to keep my attention. I actually read it within a week, guys. I liked this book. Like I said, on the basis, I liked this book, but there was a few things that I kind of had issue with. So let's kind of talk about those real quick. I felt the book started off really strong. It takes place in this military academy me. There's these dragons. Like I thought that was just a really cool element and I was really interested where the authors go with it. But as the book went on, I slowly started not lose interest in it, but it stopped answering the question of why I should care. I felt like the plot wasn't really there until the very, very end. And even that was very predictable, which we will talk more about that later. Let's talk about the romance between Violet and Zayden. Guys, part of this is my fault. I did not realize this was more just a romance book, but set in a fantasy world. I didn't do much research on this book. I knew it was popular. I seen advertisements everywhere for it. And so I was just trying to look for a book that I thought, you know what, a lot of people liked it. Maybe I'll try it and I'll like it too. So I didn't realize it was more of a romance book. So that's on me. And so kind of once knowing that I'm like, okay, but I think for me, I just, I couldn't buy the romance. And I think the romance kind of ruined it for me a little bit because I mean, you read some fancy books like Sarah J Maas books, Cassandra Clare books, like there's romance there. And I like that romance, but it's not the whole main point. And I felt like sometimes the romance overshadowed the what was actually happening in the plot to begin with. And again, it's a romance book, so I guess that's normal, actually. Oh, and maybe too, because I already knew they ended up together going into the book, that it wasn't like that, oh wow, they've ended up together. And I don't know, like, I think what kind of bothered me is I think the author had such a good idea of where there was tension, like her history and his history, and how they kind of hated each other. And I thought that was really interesting, and I liked how that was, but then ended by page 200. And even though it's like he said oh he didn't really like her but you find out he liked her the entire time I think it just kind of took away from the oh this is actually a really good tension that the author is building up I feel like this video is more of analysis than me actually talking about it but this me or just I, I feel like this should be called a book ramble instead of book talk I'm kind of just rambling a lot of my thoughts here and how I felt about it and I think some of the dialogue of how Violet felt towards Aiden and her liking him kind of took away then from other parts as well and I think I, I read one reviewer and I think they made a good point normally I love first person perspectives but sometimes it doesn't work in fantasy and I feel like this is an example especially when we don't really know much about the academy itself we don't know much about the world we didn't know much about the plot and taking it from Violet's perspective I think it kind of lessened the plot a little bit more having it from Violet's perspective I think it also kind of ruined the romance because then it heavily laid on the romance but it just took away from the plot and then when we did hit these huge plot points at the end yes we were still surprised because it was from Violet's perspective so we only know what Violet Violet knows but as a reader it felt like it just came out of nowhere there was never the ooh maybe something is going on here it kind of just felt random it kind of felt like the author decided at the very end to maybe put a plot in the book I don't know that was just my thoughts I kind of felt like sometimes with the characters especially between Violet and Zayden felt like the author was trying too hard especially with the dialogue sometimes it just felt natural and I feel the author really did do a good job with the background characters but I wish we were able to explore them more than just this is who this person is and what they do but explore more I want to know more about the powers and like the world and how that works but I also felt like so these characters are in their early 20s but they read very much like they were teenagers I don't know if anybody else got that that's just how I felt with it but also now knowing too that the author does have a background contemporary romance type books it makes a lot more sense of why it went how it did because I feel like if this is a five book series and then she literally had like the big point of them becoming kind of a couple at the end it was very 
okay, where are we working up to now in these five books? And I get it near the end. Violet kind of turned away from Dayton. But I felt like just having that big moment in the book, like I said, I went into this not realizing it was a romance, guys. I did like how it was fast paced. I already said that I liked how it was fast paced. I liked how the page turned. I did like how there was some drama in there. That I really did like. I liked how there wasn't a lot of telling. And I know that kind of contradicts what I said about how you didn't know a lot about the world. But I did like how there wasn't a lot of telling. It kind of just started right off the bat. It was very quick. I liked how by page 200 they already got the dragons. Not knowing where the plot was going. I was like why do they already have their dragons? It's only page 200. And like I felt like not knowing how the book was supposed to go. It kind of took away from me trying to figure out why things were happening in the book. I think the concepts of the dragons were really cool. I think how the name she named the dragons were really cool. I liked that part. I liked how her dragon called her silver one. I thought that was super cool. I thought the ending was very predictable guys. I kind of had an idea. I had an idea. I was like I feel like her brother is actually still alive and he's not dead. And then yeah sure enough that's that's what happened. <laughs> I got that one right. I feel Violet's character went into the whole heroin trope in a lot of these types of books where okay she's described as this fragile person and like how you know like she has weak joints and ligaments and everything else. And so I liked how within the first scene of the fight scene it shows that. But then afterwards it's like oh and then she got powerful and then she becomes invincible basically. And I don't know. I get it like you don't want to read a character who's constantly always failing. But I felt like there was then like after that one point is like now she's invincible and it's like everything went away and now she's strong again. And I don't know. I felt like the author should have worked more into that and really fleshed out her character because I felt that was what was giving Violet this really interesting perspective and take. So I think then when the author kind of moved into the now she's a strong person it very much like kind of take away from it. And some of it I kind of wonder if my perspective is warped a little because I did like binge read this. So even though this might have happened around the course of months to me I'm like happened like the pages ago. I did like her character growth. I felt the author really did write a lot of good battle scenes. Like I actually thought those scenes were really well read. The book was not bad. Well, it wasn't not well read. It was actually very interesting. The battle scenes and seeing that. The, the whole dragon claim thing. Like that part was very creative I felt. But I also felt like with Violet's character there was also a lot of coincidence. She has two dragons and oh one of them happens to be able to stop time. Oh what a coincidence. This is gonna help her. Or there was so much of like oh the dragons weed out the weak and everything else. And Violet falling but then her dragons like helping her and I get that like again maybe there was a special bond between her and her dragon but at the same time it's like if they weed out the weak what made her so special and different. Okay this is my weird theory I have here. So the reason why I think her dragon was very like lenient on her is because so we have the rebel. I don't know what they're called the rebellion ones. Basically the kids of the parents who died and the last person who bonded with Violet's dragon was like a friend of her brother's and I'm kind of wondering if the dragons didn't know her brother was alive and so that's kind of why they helped her more. I don't know but that's kind of the theory I was going with there. The character Dane. Now I actually did think the author did pretty well with this character. You like him at first you're like okay yeah like he kind of has the big brother best friend vibes and then kind of just slowly seeing him basically deteriorate. I think though I felt like there wasn't a lot of explanation why okay so he wants to keep Violet safe. Perfect. Makes a lot of sense. I guess I just didn't understand though the whole betrayal thing. Okay so he reads her memories without her knowing. Okay that makes sense. That is actually a really good plot twist. But my thing was with the war games is when did he read her memories because they already gotten the orders to go to that place and this is probably just me. This is probably me not understanding what happened. They already had their orders to go to that place and then he reads her memories and then you realize oh it basically was a death sentence. So I'm kind of confused on where all that came from but I did think he was actually a really good character. I think the author did a good job showing him how he's struggling and about how he always likes the rules though. I, I like that and I'm actually really interested in how this character goes in on the second book. I kind of as I was reading this book I felt like I read it before. I don't know if anybody else felt like this or noticed this but a lot of books are inspired off of each other. I mean I could show you about 10 books on my bookshelf that inspired by Throne of Glass where they kind of have the same idea there. But the thing is is they take them maybe have the same idea but the way the story plays out is very different. I felt this was a combination of Divergent, A Core of Thrones of Roses, A Throne of 
glass, a red queen, and it wasn't like, okay, the elements were there. It was almost like it was a direct copy and paste. And what I mean by that is, well, one, red queen, Violet has lightning powers and she has brown and silver hair and her brother ends up being alive after they thought he was dead. Exactly what kind of happened in Red Queen. Um, A Court of Thorns and Roses, I'm sorry, but Zayden is, Zayden is literally resand. Literally resand, especially the tattoos, the shadow. It was very similar for me. Aragon with the dragons being able to communicate, but that I didn't mind. I thought that actually made a lot of sense. I actually found it interesting how like the rider could die and the dragon lived, but the dragon died, the rider lived. And I think it's maybe something with the power. I thought that was actually very interesting. But then Divergent guys, just so much of like calling quadrants, but they're really factions. Or so she went say and says his favorite food was chocolate cake. And I was like, hmm interesting or like a character that's small and because you're weak ends up being strong like I don't know there were just way too many similarities for me and I just kind of got the feeling like I've read this book before and I don't know I think maybe for someone who might have not have read those books before would have really liked this book and like I said I still love this book I feel like what I'm saying here is like wow you didn't like this book I really actually did like this book I am going to read the second book because it was still entertaining I think for me what kind of killed it was the romance that was the biggest thing it wasn't even so much the similarities it was the romance I couldn't buy the romance I just did not buy the romance whatsoever it was not bad and like I said I will read the second book for sure because sometimes it did come off as if I was reading all those books I just mentioned fan fiction sometimes uh, mostly sometimes with the dialogue I was just like cringe a little bit again there was not much explanation the world building felt like there was really no plot until the very last page literally last page I think it would have been a little better if we started hearing like whispers of like hey something's not right the only reason why I knew we shouldn't trust the what we thought was the good guys was because in the book it even says even worse Violet begins to suspect leadership is hiding a terrible secret okay but I felt like that plot never came into view we never really see Violet suspecting anything so I don't know like I said I guess if you were to just read this book outright like as if it was a romance book like an Emily Henry book or anything else maybe it would have been like okay yeah I get why the romance is the bigger part of, of the plot but I feel like if you're gonna put it even in a fantasy category I feel like in fantasy books it's just my own opinion but I feel like fantasy books you need the plot to be bigger than the romance at least starting out and then move it on and like I said I felt the relationship went too quickly it's like they're supposed to hate each other and I didn't really feel like the author really built that tension between them where you're like ah yes they really do hate each other or yeah I can feel he hates her because I knew right off the bat I'm like he don't really hate her again and I think this is like we kind of the author kind of skirts around like hey this is bad but never goes into why it's bad so for example the power to read minds is considered punishable by death so obviously I'm gonna assume now because the government was trying to hide things and they didn't want other people to know that's why they'd be punishable by death but it never comes out to say that book and especially because Violet was a scribe I feel like she would have known a little bit more about what was going on because she probably have read those classified scrolls or I just felt like it was almost like this is bad but I'm kind of gonna have to piece it together why that's bad like I said I kind of wish if it was a third person perspectives we would have got a little more of Zayden's perspective I don't know I felt like especially when it's like Liam and Zayden are like foster brothers but I've never felt that connection so yeah those are kind of just my thoughts like I said guys I know I definitely am not in the majority on this I think for me personally like if I think about the times where I don't know what you want to call the young adult renaissance or I don't know but like when Divergent was big when Hunger Games was big when Court of Thorns and Roses was big when they were the book to read I was part of that and so I I think that's kind of why I just didn't care for this book too much because I kind of felt like at times I was rereading those books. But it was still a good book. I think now realizing it was more of a romance than a fantasy book kind of takes away the okay now I kind of get it. If I get past so if you take away like I said the way too fast romance and some of the cheesy dialogue it was not a bad book. I actually am going to read the second book and I am actually very excited to read the second book because like I said even though there was so much I recognized from other books and like I said the romance or the characters it still was very fast paced I liked how the author put a lot of attention behind each chapter it wasn't just a filler chapter but it, there was a lot of intention behind it I liked how there was a little drama in there like I did like those aspects it definitely kept me wanting to keep reading it it definitely was a page turner I think too why I was a little disappointed in this book was just because I think with anything like hype movies tv shows books I think you tend to go into a little bit more critical
article than just reading it as if it was just a book. I think it's not so much you're looking for bad things, but you're kind of saying, okay, now why is this hyped? And so I think that's tend to also dampen it a little bit. But like I said, guys, I definitely will be reading the second book. I definitely will probably be reviewing it. I did like it. Like I said, just reading it alone, like forgetting how like my personal thoughts about it and everything, I would still rate it 8 out of 10. I still really liked the book. It's just, I would kind of want to sit down and kind of talk about like what I didn't like the book. It was still a good book. I'm very excited to see how it goes in the second book. I hope it's going to now go into more of a plot. I kind of, I would say I have a love-hate relationship with this book. Anyways, guys, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.